Input validation is the practice of disabling a button until a user inputs text or fulfills certain input requirements. Initially, the button is disabled or grayed out, preventing the user from clicking or tapping it. Once the user meets specific criteria, they can proceed with actions associated with the button. To achieve the disabled or grayed out functionality when the app launches, we'll modify the login button's default disability property here in the Properties panel. Now let's head to the Blocks tab to define the criteria for when the button will be enabled. In the Advanced Blocks section, click Any Component. The Any Component blocks allow you to perform an action on many different components of the same type. For example, rather than set up separate block combinations to monitor for changes to the email text input and the password text input, the Any Component event block monitors for changes to any text input component on the screen. Add an If Do block from the Control Blocks drawer. We want to set criteria for each text input component, the email address and password, so click Logic and drag and drop the AND block next to IF. Click Text, drag the Does Contain block, and drop it in the first half of the AND block. All email addresses have an at symbol, so we can use that as criteria for the email address text input. For the password, Google's current minimum password character count is 8, and Firebase's is 6, so we'll say the password text input must be a minimum length of 6 characters. And once those two criteria are met, we want the login button to be enabled. Our users will likely be frustrated if they think they've completed the fields correctly and the sign-in button is still disabled. So let's add some messaging to communicate the issue. We'll start with the email address. Click its text input in the component tree and drag and drop the when text input on focus block. This event fires when this text input loses focus, i.e. the user clicks or taps on another component. Add an if do else block. Click logic, drag the block with two empty spaces separated by an equals sign and connect it to the if. Copy and paste the does text contain the at symbol block and place it in the first half of the equation. We want to communicate to users when their email address does not include the at symbol, so complete the equation with the false block. This app already has an error label component, so we can repurpose that to communicate with the user that there is an issue with their text input. And if the text input does contain an at symbol, we want the error label to be invisible. Let's replicate this entire block combination and modify it for the password text input component. Let's test it out in the web preview. When the email address we input doesn't include an at symbol, the user is presented with the error message, and the button remains disabled. When we correct the error, the error message is no longer visible. Let's test the password as well. Great! We've successfully implemented text input validation to disable a button until our text input conditions are met. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check out our other tutorials and Thunkable Academy courses. And remember, innovation should have no limits.